Hello everyone and welcome to the series about machine learning. This is part 5 and it's about pre-processing. In the previous uh, lesson, we've uh, talked about clustering, uh, k-means algorithm, finding patterns, and uh, testing um, clustering accuracy. Uh, this series uh, starts with the first part, setting up your environment, then uh, second part, about uh, it's an introduction to machine learning, where we cover clustering, then uh, regression, um, and uh, finally uh, clustering. Um, and this one will be talking about pre-processing. Pre-processing is really important to um, do because most algorithms will uh, only accept uh, either um, normalized data or at least numerical data. So if you, uh, if you have text or uh, booleans or um, dates, you will have to um, pr uh, process that and make it uh, compatible with your algorithm. Uh, for this data set, I will be using my uh, YouTube stats. I've um, downloaded my YouTube stats as of um, today. Um, the columns we have are video, upload um, time, video length. Um, I think these are two separate columns actually. Sorry. Um, video length and the list goes on. Um, First, I will be uh, importing uh, a number of libraries, actually. Um, I'm importing some core libraries, feature extraction, um, uh, dict vectorizer. I'm importing preprocessing, a uh, module from sklearn. And I'm importing joblib. Um, I'm hiding um, uh, warnings, um, so it won't bother us with the depreciation warnings. And finally, I'm configuring pandas, uh, maximum columns, and uh, width of the screen. Uh, so um, we'll be loading data using pandas, so panda that um, read um, CSV. But for this tutorial, I made, um, oh, sorry, I forgot to execute the first one. Um, for this tutorial, I made this um, um, notebook um, an interactive uh, GUI. So you can download this notebook and use it um, um, in your own uh, environment to do any pre-processing. Uh, first, it will um, look for any text or um, comma-separated value files. So you can take a look at this stock, for example. I have some stock data in here. I can take a look, but this is what we will be working with. Uh, my YouTube stats. So uh, I have a uh, number of columns in here. Some have text, some have um, uh, text representation of a date, floats, and integers. So um, I will load this, and it uh, notifies us that uh, this is done. The second thing I will be doing is um, type conversion. So uh, mainly I will be converting um, um, the that type or do some... Um, uh, more processing for dates. So uh, in here, I uh, executed the cell. In here, I have a video. It, it's telling me it's an object, so I'll leave it to that. Upload time, I will change this one to a text date. And I will um, put the uh, format for the text date. I know it's B for month, um, D for day, uh, Y for year. Uh, I for 12 hour, um, 12 hours, and uh, no, capital M for minute, then finally, P for AM and PM. Um, if you don't know the um, format, I left this table in here, so you can go and um, check which um, um, symbol you need um, to extract uh, your data or parse it. Um, so let me try to, um, I'm happy actually, I can change the death type of any other columns. I can see the maximum, minimum, average, and median for each column. So I can know some uh, interesting uh, stats about my um, uh, YouTube channel. Um, in here I'll uh, process this, uh, let me see. Yeah, um, type conversion was uh, successful. So um, the, uh, Next thing I will be doing is um, 
processing uh, text. In here, I have uh, two um, text uh, columns. Um, upload time is uh, already processed as date, so I'll not be processing that. But video, uh, video, I have the title of the video in uh, this column. So I can do two things with it. I can either map it, so it will map each video to a number. So this video will be number 15, the other one will be 14, 13, and list goes on. Uh, or I can do binary vectorize. So let's do both and see how they work. Uh, I processed um, I processed as uh, mapping. And you can see that I have a new column in here, uh, video mapped, and it shows 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, um, representing the um, video name. The second thing, uh, the problem with this is um, um, it infers that this video is closer to this than this because um, the, the difference between these numbers are smaller than the difference between these two numbers. So it infers that these two videos are closer to each other somehow, but that's not the case. That might be the case in um, some uh, uh, with some other data, but that's not the case with our um, current uh, example. So I'll uh, do binary vectorize. I'll process the data and I will display it. And uh, you can see um, I still have uh, video mapped, but now I have a number of columns representing each video. So video is um, this one. Uh, and the first row shows uh, one, that's uh, true. And the second, um, and shows zero for the rest. So um, basically this column is telling me video is this one and it shows the value for each video. So I can tell this one is um, uh, Markdown and Latex, which is number four. Can tell number one is uh, NumPy, and the list goes on and on with the um, binary columns. So uh, finally, I'll be uh, processing uh, dates. Um, in here, I have the um, uh, upload um, date. I, w I don't need actually the year because all of my videos were uploaded in 2014 uh, but I might keep it just for consistency, uh, consistency. But, um, finally I will be uh, removing uh, seconds because I don't need um, that and I will uh, process my um, data now I can preview it again and uh, you will see that we have now new columns um, First one is year, month, day, day of week, hour, and minute. Um, so I'm basically decomposing my main features into numerical features. Uh, finally, some of the al some algorithms won't work until you normalize or standardize your data. Uh, what we're doing here is either centering our, uh, our data around uh, zero or uh, scaling them or doing both. So let's see how does that work. Now, since we have all of um, our uh, features in numerical format, we can do um, this. We can, uh, for example, go to um, video length in uh, minutes, and I will scale it to a scale between zero and one. Um, and I will also process this one, average uh, percentage um, viewed. I will process this one as a standard scalar. So we can see how um, these two work. I'll um, process my columns and I will visualize the normalized feature. So you can see um, video length in minutes. It goes from almost a uh, few minutes, two minutes maybe, until 40 plus minutes almost 50 but if I go to the scaled one I will see the same structure of data but it's scaled between 0 and 1 some algorithms require um, your data to be formatted like this the um, second thing we uh, did with um, was a scalar f um, a standard scaler and uh, I did this with um, 
uh, average uh, percentage viewed. So um, some of uh, my videos have like 90 plus uh, percent average um, view. This one has 70, the rest are below 50. Um, now I can go and uh, see the standard scalar um, version of this uh, feature. And I can see that the uh, mean, the average of the, this feature is zero and the standard deviation is one. This is a standard scalar feature now because uh, it removed the means from my uh, features and it scaled it to be uh, one um, standard deviation unit. Further processing my r might, um, you might uh, have to deal with the missing values. The best um, thing is to um, uh, go back and check what you can actually do about missing data. But um, if you are at um, a stage where you uh, have to work with some mis uh, missing data, you might need to uh, drop some uh, features or attributes or columns. You might need to drop uh, some rows, uh, like um, also called the samples or data points. And you might, uh, you, you might be able to impute these uh, values by uh, calculating the mean, median, or mode, which is the most common uh, value. Uh, you might some, uh, to need some, um, your data might uh, need uh, some denoising for uh, time series. And uh, if you're working with uh, long text, you might uh, work with the counting vectorizer. It's like binary vectorizer, but it counts um, how many times you um, had a certain uh, token in your uh, text. Uh, finally, you can save your um, uh, pre-processed data set, and here you can save it as a comma-separated value. But to really um, keep it in the same state that you have it, um, I suggest you uh, use uh, JobLib to uh, pickle your um, data frame. And now I have my uh, data frame uh, pickled and ready to be used in any other notebook. This uh, tutorial is available open source on uh, GitHub and it's uh, viewable on MB Viewer. You can download this and use it for any um, pre-processing that you might need to do locally. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope if you like this, you will subscribe to this channel and you will watch the previous part of this series about regression or the next part about feature extraction. Thank you.